Dushyant and uh, I manage the system acquisition team at Directive. Uh, I'm going to give a short uh, talk about uh, the tools and uh, you know uh, the applications and the, uh, the teams that we have to manage our entire uh, uh, application stack and infrastructure and stuff like that. So. Uh, to give a brief introduction about myself, I've been uh, with Directive for the past eight years, and uh, been doing system administration stuff on Linux and stuff for that for more than ten years now. Um, and uh, the uh, the main, I mean, most of the infrastructure at Directive is on Linux, and uh, you know, some stuff, some products do use Windows. I will be covering uh, the. Uh, Linux infrastructure and automation uh, surrounding that and not the Windows infrastructure side. So, so the teams that we have in place are mostly the engineering teams which consists of system architects, software engineering and some sysads as well and the operations which are the 24 stroke 7 teams like system operations, data center operations for uh, remote hands and network operations. The corporate IT team basically they only handle our internal infrastructure and so the entire set of all the systems team form a systems operation group uh, with various uh, skill sets and uh, focus on different areas of the infrastructure. The products uh, that we have in the con are, you know again a uh, lot of various products, uh, ad monetization uh, which belong to the media or <coughs> business units. Uh, and then we have a lot of hosting related products and then the messaging platform top or to ping pong and stuff like that. They are all hosted mostly from collocated data centers in the US. Uh, so we buy our own hardware, we you know, we buy our own networking equipment, uh, we are with ISPs and uh, so the whole infrastructure is managed by us. And so we are kind of getting moving some stuff to AWS. Uh, at some stage. <coughs> so the applications again, you know, a lot of uh, open source applications. Uh, most of the op uh, 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 application stacks and the products use the uh, open, uh, open source applications. Some of them are listed out here. And so coming to the infrastructure tools and automation, so the, the core Part of any infrastructure automation effort uh, is the inventory, right? What do you have? What kind of uh, hardware do you have? What networking equipment do you have? What applications are installed? Um, uh, and stuff like that. So we started off when we, you know, we used to be a, uh, coming to infrastructure management, we used to be the traditional folks where, you know, we used to have scripts that we run on each box to do stuff. You know, and over a period of time, we realized that it doesn't scale. And so we started off automating the entire infrastructure uh, from the ground up and realized that the first part that we need to tackle is the inventory. So we, we started using this application called Rack Monkey, uh, written in Perl, and, uh, you know, collecting our inventory bits there. And later on, you know, made an ROR fork of that in the present SDC box right now. So this this application basically consists of all of our uh, all of our infra, uh, 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 equipment details, the basic, uh, starting from racks, uh, colocation centers, the uh, servers and them, their hardware specifics, their you know networking information, their which port and the, the switch are they connected to, and stuff like that. So to uh, so be basically you know provision racks. Uh, for any product, we provision a rack, stack up with uh, an entire load of servers, and then you know uh, deploy applications on it and forget about them. So, uh, so and they get used whenever uh, you know, the capacity is, is required. So, so when the rack is loaded, you know all barcoded information gets fed in into the uh, inventory tool, and then we have an integration with Cobbler for uh, you know assigning roles to the the fresh hardware which was stacked onto the rack. So the cobbler profiles, so when, when they kick start, uh, they get appropriate uh, cobbler profiles. And for Windows boxes, I mean, it goes to WDS and stuff like that, but that's not integrated on you. And so it has other uh, integration with 
other devices like uh, you know, the power strips to get power consumption of a rack or a server and it also has integration with networking equipment for uh, some stuff and we also do password management with that. So these are all again uh, uh, the uh, authentication to this tool itself and it's very so we are uh, mostly Dell hardware, um, uh, so all automation is surrounding again the Dell hardware with uh, you know, some stuff like grade creation, etc. that happens after a machine is racked, uh, the live CD, you know, it boots via live CD, live CD and then you uh, do the rate creation settings and stuff like that. There's the metadata is collected and uploaded to the inventory tool and then the OS provisioning is kicked off. So, and then once the OS is provisioned, you have uh, configuration management stuff, which is, which happens by puppet. And so we again wrote a lot of modules and, uh, you know, uh, I think. So, we need to. module for each of the applications that we use and many of them are custom according to the needs that we have um, and we build a lot of custom RPMs <coughs> and we use uh, Koji uh, for that purpose so all we need to do is upload a spec file in the source RPM and it gives us <coughs> RPMs for all uh, architectures and uh, the OS uh, flavors that we use and JIT for uh, revision control and it's a shared repository, all the puppet managers uh, uh, sit in there that every project uses. All deployment and changes track by puppet. And we have a lot of custom facts uh, in puppet which gives us information of each of the box. Uh, uh, like LLTP is a tool which <coughs> uh, tells you about which switch emission is connected to and it also updates the the switch also when LLTP is enabled on the switch, networking switch, it uh, updates the port aliases uh, so that you know, you know when you look at the switch configuration you will know if this machine is connected to that switch, uh, this particular port. Uh, so that is the host name is updated on the switch. So <coughs> this custom fact helps us in uh, making the puppet manifest easier where we can uh, decide on what configuration to put into that box based on that fact. And we do some application deployments where have to as well, uh, so that the developers have control directly to deploy to their uh, stages and for that. We also use a tool called M-Collective, <coughs> uh, which integrates with Puppet as well, and then you can run uh, commands on a group of nodes, say, you know, run uh, uh, this command on all machines on this particular rack. So uh, you can power down the entire rack if you are on a maintenance and you, know, you can boot up the entire rack if you are on a maintenance. So those are the provisioning tools, configuration management and for monitoring we uh, use NAGUS, the industry, I mean, I mean the standard across most of the infrastructures like this. Uh, we did investigate a lot of tools like HyperAc and uh, Xenos and all these commercial tools that are available out there or you know spin-offs or NAG US with a good UI but they all seem to be you know for regular uh, IT admins with you know who, who need a UI uh, to do stuff like add a box and stuff like that. but we uh, for us the most of the uh, the flexibility that the basic NAG US configuration uh, files provide is uh, invaluable and, and so we wrote our own NAG US uh, uh, puppet module uh, uh, type and a provider which helps us configure NAGUS from the uh, plain configuration files. So, so it's a simple uh, module which looks up all the host information and the host groups they belong to from uh, CSVs using puppet ext lookup and you know uh, adds the host to the NAGUS and assigns it to a particular host group or a host role and stuff for that. And all service checks are associated with uh, these host groups. 
so that any host, when a new host is added, we just have to assign it to a host group so that they generate all the checks automatically. We don't have to configure every check on the box. And we have uh, network service dependencies, you know, a lot of times you will have some network issue and stuff like that, so you will get flooded with thousands of others on your inbox. So this uh, dependencies uh, help minimize that. And we use check by XSH, not MRP, so that we don't have to maintain client set configurations. And most of them are active checks and discipline monitoring is still something that we are working on. So we also use PingDOM uh, for external uh, uh, monitoring uh, to track our SLAs and stuff like that. So all our uh, main services which are accessed by our customers, we have a service check in PingDOM which tells us if uh, uh, that service is down from a, a particular location. So uh, the PingDOM you know, uh, checks from 14 different locations so we know that if it's down uh, on any of the GR well, uh, areas because of uh, routing issues and networking issues and stuff. And for incident management, we classify alerts as, uh, you know, different categories, S1 being the most critical and S1, S3 being the most critical. So the, all the S1 alerts are handled by the operations team, which are serving with the books and escalations and stuff. So both PingDOM and Angular's alerts are uh, integrated with uh, request tracker. So, uh, uh, which is the RD, uh, which helps us uh, to track every uh, uh, event or alert that happens on our infrastructure uh, for later analysis as well. And we do have some automation surrounding ping pong uh, to add services and checks uh, to their system. And for trending, we use uh, Ganglia, uh, which is uh, one of the, you know, uh, mostly used uh, uh, monitoring solution for uh, you know collecting metrics from your systems. So uh, and it's extremely scalable, easier to configure, you know, you can uh, write a quick script to collect some metric that you want to you know collect from a system. Like if you want to graph load over a period of uh, you know over weekly, uh, monthly, yearly and stuff, then that's you can write a simple script which really runs the uptime stats uh, via geometric. So uh, the, the, those things are by default pro provided by Ganglia itself, like load, CPU, metrics and stuff like that. But you know, it ma Ganglia makes it easy for you to collect other metrics that you want to collect, like say, on your website you want to you know, track the number of registrations per day you know, uh, uh, on a graph. So you can you know, write a simple SQL query to return it from the database and send it to Ganglia for uh, graph. And use RRD Cache-D, which is an enhancement. Uh, for uh, any RRD based solution to speed up. Uh, so if you if you have used the RRD tool and uh, any solution based on RRD tool like Cacti and stuff like that and you have thousands of hosts, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you will, uh, you will, I won't get saturated because of a lot of random IO because a lot of RRDs are very small, small files and stuff. So RRD cache D acts like a layer, a caching layer between uh, a tool like Cacti or Cacti and the disk. So, it, uh, so Ganglia talks to RRD Cache D, right, say to send all updates, and RRD Cache D caches everything and writes, uh, 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 you know, uh, every few uh, seconds as a sequence, uh, sequential I/O. And uh, so we group clusters based on uh, project project roles. Like for example, one particular project, like Scanzo, the Scanzo web will be a, a cluster. So all the web servers on that. Uh, having that role will uh, appear in that cluster and you can do cluster comparison and say how much each box uh, is performing, or, uh, how is each box performing, how many web requests is each box getting and stuff like that. And GMOD is the client utility for Ganglia which collects the statistics and runs on each uh, server and uh, the, uh, so it contains of uh, Python modules and you can also write geometric scripts to collect metrics from servers. So we have written some uh, custom modules to collect. Uh, uh, so if you, if you have used SAR, you know that it provides most of the statistics on the system. Uh, like I.O., SWAP, uh, you know, uh, paging statistics and room statistics and stuff like that. So we uh, simply collect it via SAR and send it all to geometric so that we have uh, trendable metrics. You know, we don't want to look at a, you know, a metric when something goes down or when you 
tended over a period of time, you send to, to see patterns and can figure out what issues. Uh, is it. And a lot of my pattern models for all the Apache and different applications and the custom scripts. So, so each project gets its own uh, views and uh, with important metrics as a dashboard so that you can you know, see the performance of a particular uh, product at any point of time. Uh, we also use uh, Graphite for uh, custom application metrics, business metrics, etc. Like stuff that I spoke about, like number of registrations or number of connected clients and stuff like that for certain projects. So uh, from Java, you know, the uh, studies are directly sent to Graphite using this code uh, 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 modules. We also have uh, some Python code to save some uh, application exposes a metric as a JSON. We can fetch it via this Python uh, uh, daemon and uh, send it to Graphite. For network monitoring, we do uh, cacti, observium, is another new protein and what's up gold is a partial utility uh, for his flow and uh, JFlow analysis and stuff like that. And log management Splunk uh, for uh, critical logs uh, with our operations team. And we have uh, log stash and elastic search for the large data sets, large amount of uh, uh, logs like yeah, you know, our mail hosting platforms, you know, we send a lot of mails out, we receive a lot of mails. So we uh, send up, we index all those logs via Logstash and Elasticsearch so that we can search for, uh, you know, email delivery logs or uh, say somebody say, I, I, I have, if a customer complains that I have not received an email, we can quickly search and see, you know, uh, what happened to that email and stuff like that. We also use uh, Play Log for certain other projects for uh, project application logs. Uh, <coughs> where uh, like log for j and this, this can be directly sent to the log for having a so if, see, if you want to see if, uh, what, how, what your application is doing at this point in time if you, uh, your application has enough logging so you can use the log to have a running dashboard of all the logs so uh, that's it I think those are the these are the only tools and uh, you know uh, stuff that we use to run our operations and many of them are uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, very mature. I think it's easy, and there's a lot of documentation available out there to uh, set up a point on this. Can take up any questions if you guys have uh, anything related to the voice provisioning or infrastructure itself or the automation surrounding that?